Welcome back race fans, this is RC Speedy Jab and actually we're going to be doing uh, episode 2 of Racecraft Race School. Uh, this time we're going to focus on how to defend and inadvertently that actually brings up a great uh, topic uh, that, that goes along with it with how to attack. So we're going to be looking at two drivers. We're going to be looking at myself in the yellow Cayman right here, uh, GT4. Uh, it's the stock PI which I believe is 782. Uh, so we made it exactly, um, you know, bone stock. Um, so myself and ORC Comet behind here, and we're going to take a look at his car um, really quick. Let's look at his car. Um, oh, just the back end again. But uh, he's in the same car, just a different livery, uh, but same build, everything. So what we were actually doing was we were we were actually testing out. Uh, we want to do a Porsche Cup endurance event, and we want to have the same builds with a slightly different um, you know, uh, rim weights um, and rim widths, tire widths. Uh, to kind of separate uh, drivers a little bit. Uh, some that are faster get, get uh, skinnier tires and maybe heavier rims to slow them down a bit. And then the drivers in tier two and tier three, uh, technically like a silver and a bronze driver, would actually get uh, mid-weight rims and uh, maybe mid-tire width. And then um, the bronze driver, uh, technically the slowest if you're looking at lap times, uh, but not necessarily overall consistency and everything, would get uh, the max rim, uh, uh, max lowest weight on rims and then max uh, tire width. Um, so that's kind of how we're, we're testing it right now. So this ends up being an amazing battle with ORC Comet and myself um, at the end. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to show you guys um, the defense from my part and then we'll, we'll examine the, um, the attack um, and what Comet's doing because both of us did textbook I think uh, uh, wheel to wheel racing without any contact, anything like that. So um, without further ado, Let's go ahead and uh, switch to myself because we're going to go over defending first. And you'll see um, Comet obviously uh, on the attack part too this whole time. Um, let's go to, um, oh, sorry, not that one. Let's go to game cameras uh, again so I can see relatively where um, Comet is when, once we go. So here we go. We're coming into um, the, the, the two last laps uh, that we did on this. Uh, so we'll just play through this. We're coming through the bus stop right now. Uh, we're obviously at Daytona International Speedway. And uh, you'll see, actually, I'm quite a bit ahead right here. Um, but what happens is he actually uh, executed a really, really, really strong braking move into uh, turn two, into the international horseshoe, um, to turn two, turn three, whatever it is. Um, so I'm feeling pretty comfortable, feeling pretty good. We're both in the same tune, so I know the strengths and weaknesses of the car. Um, unbeknownst to me, but no one's to comment, he actually figured out uh, to shift way later into sixth gear, which I did not uh, during this race. He, he told me afterwards. <laughs> That's how he was catching up. Um, uh, other than that, so we're, we're pretty even on pace. Uh, Tom's a really good driver um, and really trustworthy, and uh, I know exactly what to expect him. So here, you can see he's not closing up, but he does an amazing job under brakes right here. I think he goes wide, but he actually pulls it back and catches up big time on me right there. That was a great uh, just threshold breaking move that he did there. So I'm not ready to defend yet, so we'll see. This is coming into the West Horseshoe. This is my first uh, defense. So just middle of the road, uh, keeping it tighter there, not, not leaving him any room. See so it poke his head in there, or nose in there on the left side. Uh, but he can't really go anywhere. He's still there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go middle road again, make sure to hit my breaking point, pin him on the outside, take a really tight line, and then get on the gas as soon as I can. So overslow the car just a tiny bit from what I would do to the racing line. Um, and you can see here he gets a great run um, onto the banking NASCAR 1 and 2 at Daytona. And you'll see him focus his nose up here really soon. I'm, I'm just keeping a really tight line down to the uh, the yellow to, to signify my intentions uh, that I'm not going to just let him by. And there's that fifth and sixth gear I mentioned. You see how much he just drew up right there. So. Again, middle of the road, make sure he's on the outside, try to make him go the long way around this corner. Um, and that's the goal. I, I want to go the shortest way, and I want to make him go the longest way. So you can see he's there again, taking the high line, and you'll hear the cars coming up here after, um, I think this is um, NASCAR 3 or 4 or something like that. But you'll hear me shift right there, and he stays in it right here, and you see the car catch up, and then he shifts right there. So he held on to that an additional like maybe four or five seconds. You see the difference in this came in where that happens. So again, really tight line. Watch how close we get right here. And watch how much respect between both drivers. 
I make sure to make a tight line, make sure you can't do the undercut, um, and then just power out of that. So again, I know he's close. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna keep him on the outside. Remember, he was mighty in this last, uh, the last lap under that braking. So I actually got up on the curb and kind of overslowed a little bit, but he had nowhere to go. So it actually ended up being a good thing. I did not intend to actually overslow on that. I just got, I just took kind of a shallow, too shallow line, got to the curb, and so the car a little bit, and I could get on the power like I normally would. Same thing here, but except for I actually go a little wide. Now, something happened, oh no, it didn't happen yet. So he actually got a really good run on that. Um, if he was a little bit closer, he might have been able to stick that move. Again, nice and tight. And you can see he gets a little slide right there. So he's actually back on the back foot a little bit now and he's losing, you can see a little bit of car length from that one little slide. So again, if he would have, um, he, that was his best chance right there to stay really close. Um, but you'll see, uh, based on that fifth and sixth gear, he'll actually make that ground up. So I actually don't go defensive here. I take a pretty normal race line and my normal braking line. So let's watch this in reverse so you can see how close and how he's doing. As long as I'm on that apex, you know, there's nothing he can do. So now we're coming to the drag line. So we're going to come to the end of this. What I'll do is I'll pause it right before we get to the end so the video doesn't stop. And we'll go back to his view and watch what he sees. Watch this really quick. He's gonna, I'm going to shift here. Yep. And he stays in fifth gear. And here he comes. Oh, sorry, I don't want the video to end. So he ends up being really close. So you can see I'm close, he's uh, about a car length and a half behind uh, me. So if we would have been another, I don't know, quarter of a straight or whatever, um, he would have been by me. So uh, let's go back and let's t take a look at it from Comet's view. Uh, those couple uh, last two laps. And this will be the attacking part of it because Comet does an amazing job of uh, just attacking me, putting me, putting me under pressure, trying to make me drive in my rear view mirrors, which obviously you, you have to keep an eye on it uh, when you're defending. Uh, but it's really important um, when you're defending to really nail your brake, your brake zones, uh, nail your apexes, and, and know kind of where you need to position your car. If you have, if you don't know, okay, here, all right now, so let's uh, switch. Okay, here's Comet's point of view. But if you don't know how to, how to um, it, where to position your car and, and know the relative strength and weakness of the driver behind you. Um, then you could be on the back foot and, and you might be depending too late and trying to move across on somebody and kind of be illegal driving, I think is the best way to say it. Uh, not really good driving etiquette. So here's Comet's point of view again. Let's watch this whole thing now and watch, watch his masterful uh, attacking on me. Again, mighty under the brakes here, he catches up a ton right there. And then gets on power by having that late apex. Um, so it, that corner uh, into the International Horseshoe, you can do a lot of different lines. Um, so I prefer a tight line and try to get on the on the, curb on the right side and get on power early. Here's my first defense. So you can see he takes the, he takes the bait. He knows he can't go on the inside. We're on the about relatively the same speed, but because of that wider line, he gets more gets more traction. He can get on the gas a little sooner. So again, on the outside again. So he's actually, uh, I'm dictating this as the defensive driver, I'm dictating where I want him to place the car. So you can see there, he actually tried to the undercut, but again, with me placing my car right uh, along that line, he's not gonna try, he's not a dirty driver, he's a very clean uh, driver, as you can see in this video. Um, so he's not gonna try to go beyond the, the on the left side, uh, beyond the two yellow lines. So you see again, he has to go on the outside. He's gotta nail his brake zones too. And he's going to be looking for the undercut. That's what he's going to be doing. He's, and what that means, and you'll see it, uh, there's going to be a great example of it here. So again, he's not going to go on the yellow line. He has to go to the outside. So again, I pin him to the outside, which is what I want. That's not necessarily what he wants, but he also knows, at this point he was telling me, he also knew that we were shifting too early at 6, uh, myself and the other drivers. And he was not. And he, he noticed, look how much speed he gets. Overspeed he gets on that, just staying in fifth gear. So he's trying to use that uh, to his advantage, which it was working, I would say. He was drawing him in closer. So he's on the outside, and he's gonna try for the undercut right here. But you can see there's nowhere he can go. He can't get on the power soon enough and quick enough. And, and he, I think he had to feather the throttle a little bit. Then he's gonna go to the outside, try to take that white line, wide line, and this is where he looks for another cut back here. But again, my car's there on the apex. 
So they call it park it on the apex is a common phrase um, in racing. Um, so again, I, I must confess that was unintentional getting on the curb and actually parking the apex accidentally. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I did want to park in the apex, but I actually got one more. You see, this is a perfect opportunity for him to get up and I actually go uh, really wide, but then cut back to the middle of the road so I could again go on the outside. So the outside coming in, back onto the banking, again, nothing to do, he's going to try for the cut back. But gets a little loose right there and that momentum was it just killed him a tiny bit. Now comments actually on uh, the Logitech G920 wheel here too. Um, I have one as well, but I don't like it with Forza, so I'm on the controller. Um, so you see the difference, we're both uh, using automatic clutch. Uh, my hands fall asleep when I use the clutch, so um, I just use the, um, the automatic clutch and I use the right analog stick for my shifter actually. Um, I like it a lot personally, but I don't know very many drivers that like it or use it. Uh, but I found it suits me very well. So we come up to the end of the lap here. So hopefully that gives you a great idea of, uh, of how to defend from my side and how to attack from Comet's side. Um, again, this is episode two. We'll be doing a bunch of different episodes this, this year um, as we find um, uh, different drivers that want to learn and kind of do some stuff. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, below uh, what you guys think. If, um, if you guys think uh, that was a good representation uh, of attacking and defending. And this is just a recycling of the video, obviously, but, um, and then any comments, questions, uh, anything like that that you guys have too, uh, or any great stories you guys have about uh, a good defense that you had. Uh, this was just testing, so it was kind of fun and, you know, it ended up a strong battle ended up ensuing after that. Um, so that's, that's what awesome, that's the awesome thing about spec racing, um, having the same tune, having the same everything like that. Uh, again, we did slightly change some of the, some of the rim weights and uh, tire weights. To help some drivers that were uh, a little bit slower than us but um, it was a lot of fun so hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, again uh, if you guys haven't uh, subscribed to the channel please do so that uh, helps me and helps the channel and helps uh, the online racing collective um, get views and, and uh, get some clicks uh, please like if you do uh, dislike if you're not that's fine too um, and then uh, give any comments uh, let me know uh, what you guys thought about it we need to, if you have any suggestions for the next uh, race, racecraft, race school. Uh, but again, I'm ORC Speedy Jeb. You guys have a good night.